welcome to, to our talk today about uh, continuous delivery in Gemalto. Or um, actually, I want to talk today about how we can avoid having bad publicity. So uh, my name is Eric. I'm uh, really excited to be here. I hope you're excited as I am. So this is my first public talk. And um, I hope in the next 25 minutes, we are going to have a good time. So what are we going to talk about today? First we will talk about vulnerabilities. What are vulnerabilities, what are risks and threats, and what impact they can have on your company and on your products. We will talk about how Gmalto finds and fixes them in a continuous and automated manner. And also we will talk about how you can implement these patterns in your environment to have the same level of security that we have. Before we start, um, let me introduce myself. So um, you may have heard with my accent, so I'm actually not coming from France. Uh, I'm from Cologne, Germany. So this is what you can see in the picture there. This is uh, the Cologne Cathedral, our landmark with a nice French flag of people in front. So I thought this was a nice mix of the two things that are somehow defining me at the moment. So uh, I'm now since four years already in the south of France, and uh, I want to say, since I left Germany, we haven't won any World Cup, and since I came to France, we won a World Cup. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> Not that there is any coincidence. <laughs> so I'm working now since, um, since 10 years uh, for Gemalto. Started working in our uh, quality assurance department, then uh, later in research and development. And now since two years, two and a half years, I'm working in innovation in our CTO lab. CTO is uh, Chief Technology Officer, and uh, our mission is to, to align the various technology strategies across uh, our various business units. So um, today I'm occupying, or our team is occupied with um, the alignment on several different um, key technologies, like for example, cloud, security, uh, DevOps, serverless, chaos engineering. And there we try to find a consensus between our different business units. So um, let's quickly talk about Gemalto. Um, some of you may have heard about it. Um, I guess a lot of people, are, oh, I, I guess everyone in this room here is actually impacted by our products every day. Why? Because either you are having uh, your SIM card in your phone is made by us, your uh, banking card, your passport, or maybe even when you, you're using our, um, when you're buying a SIM card, you're using our identifying solutions, like for example, know your customer. So what is important to understand about Gemalto? All of our products are based around two, two ideas. It's digital identity and data protection. We are serving large businesses like, uh, like mobile network operators, banks, or even governments. So when you are entering the Marseille airport, you are going to our border control system. What you may hear here is that we are dealing with something that is very important to you, which is your digital identity and your personal data. And this is why we thought we are having to something to say here. When, it is import when we are talking about the security of, of our software products. So, um, yeah, well, this is why we are here today. Um, coming back to the title, what is the bad publicity that we would like to avoid? I gathered here some articles uh, from, from recent online magazines like, for example, Ars Technica or TechCrunch or even, uh, let's say, more business-oriented magazines like Forbes. So when you can see uh, in February, beginning of this year, uh, Tesla was, uh, was hacked and uh, their resources were abused to do crypto mining. Uh, the Equifax hack was also very popular in the US. 100 million uh, social security numbers were, were stolen from, uh, from Equifax. So in the US, you can do a lot of uh, bad things when you have the social security number of someone. And you do not want to see your company's name in any of these headlines. So what did all of these headlines have in common? Hackers exploited a vulnerability. Just let's. That, so that we are all on the same page. A vulnerability is a weakness in one of your assets. An asset can be your hardware, your software, your people, your infrastructure. So today we will talk about vulnerabilities in your software. So not that you, you think that you will be entirely safe when we are at the end of this talk. There are always different vulnerabilities in your organization, but today we will talk about software vulnerability. I hope and I guess you all know that. So this is the, the common uh, DevOps cycle. Um, we are today at the DevOps day and uh, at the end in Gemalto, we are also implementing DevOps. And 
as we are a security company, in all of these phases, we are asking ourselves several questions. Starting with, how can we improve the security of our source code? How can we make sure that third-party libraries we are using are actually secure? We are also transitioning towards Docker and Kubernetes. So some challenges for us are, how do we make our Docker images more secure? Meaning, is the runtime secure in the Docker images? Like, for example, Java and OJS. And also, is the Docker image itself secure? And when we have done that, we also want to make sure that what we are actually shipping in production is safe, is the the artifact that we wanted to ship, and also that our production environment itself is safe. So during that talk, we will talk about all of these aspects. What you can see here is, um, is an abstraction of our continuous delivery pipeline that we have in place in Gemalto. It's kind of universal. We have it available for different programming languages. And I guess you all have, you all have the, the same kind of, um, of pipeline in, in, your, uh, in your company. So at the end, uh, you're storing your source code somewhere. You're, you're compiling it. You package it inside your Docker container. And you're starting some tests, some integration tests. You're putting it in your delivery register. Registry, uh, and at the end, uh, you're deploying either in your customer's premise, what you see on the, on the left, or in your own data center in the middle, or in the public cloud on the right. And at the end, the dotted arrow is to complete a DevOps loop, meaning that you gather feedback from your production system, and at the end, you're continuously improving your product, meaning your source code. As we were talking, or as we are talking today about uh, Docker and Kubernetes, what you can see here is, the, is a common technology stack. I guess you all know that. So having your application inside a container orchestrated with Kubernetes or maybe ECS. And we will go through all of these layers today to see what we in Gemalto also put in place in order to make every layer more secure. The keyword that you have to remind here is defense in depth, meaning that you need to secure every layer of your stack. So let's start, how can we make our application itself more secure? Source code security, third party library security. Let's start with your vulnerable source code. So the things that you're actually writing. So at the end here, you can have several kind of attacks. Like for example, an attacker can, can steal, modify, or delete your data. An attacker can execute code inside your environment or he can just shut down your application. So commonly known as uh, SQL injections, uh, remote code executions, and all of this is what you want to avoid. There is a technique that is called static uh, code analysis, and there are tools on the market that can uh, help you with that. Like for example, uh, SonarCube is one of them. It's, it's free and, uh, and openly available. Or there's a commercial product like Micro, Microfocus 45, formerly um, done by HP. Um, throughout that talk, I will propose you always open source software and commercial products that are doing more or less the same. I don't want to say with that that the open source products are bad, but in Gemalto, we are putting a strong emphasis on security and also because of regulations, we may be obliged to use commercial software over, over open source software in terms for, for secure, for um, for SLA purposes, and so I don't want to say that the open source products are bad, and you should start with using the open source products. Then later, when you are sure about the, or when you're confident about your source code security, you are certainly relying on third party libraries, like for example, Spring Boot, Apache Spring Express.js, and all of these libraries have in common that known vulnerabilities about these libraries are commonly stored in so-called CVE databases, okay, common vulnerabilities and exposures. There are tools on the market that can scan these libraries for you and tell you about the potential vulnerabilities inside these libraries. So there's, for example, OVAF's dependency check as, uh, as open source available, or there's the Nexus IQ or uh, Black Duck Hub. So these are two commercial products. Um, when you have that done, you have more, uh, you can be more uh, sure about the security status of your application. For sure, we didn't uh, talk here uh, now about dynamic application security testing. Um, it is really just that you have a static overview about known vulnerabilities inside your, your application. When we have that done, now I would like to talk about your application runtime and your container OS. So what can you do to improve that? 
to improve this, we have um, we have a technique that is commonly known as container image hardening. So, um, in the container image hardening, we have three disciplines, and let's address one by one. The first thing is that you want to reduce the attack surface. So, what does that mean? Reducing the attack surface means that you want to limit the, the amount of, of, of tools available for an attacker that he can use to exploit your system. So you can do that, for example, by not using Ubuntu or CentOS as a base of your Docker images when this is not absolutely needed. Start with a small distribution, like for example Alpine, and only include what is really needed to run your application. So, for example, what we are doing in Gemalto is that we have dedicated builder images for Java that uh, contain a JDK, but in production we are only shipping images that contain a JRE. Same, uh, we are not shipping images with NPM for Node.js into production because we don't need it. We just need a Node.js installation. Mm -hmm. So, this is the first thing that you should keep in mind. Remove everything from that image that is not absolutely needed to run your application. You won't need Netcat or TCP dump in production, I'm sure about that. The next step is that you should apply the least privilege principle, meaning Docker invites you to, to run images as root, for example. You should not do that. You should create a dedicated user that has the necessary privileges to execute your application, maybe to write some logs, but that's it. Normally, you do not need more permissions inside your Docker image for that user. And like this, you can avoid giving root access to an attacker that can exploit your, your system. Okay, and the last point is keep your content of your images up to date, meaning even inside your images, like for example, inside your, uh, your image containing Alpine and your, your, um, your, J, your JRE, your Java installation, they need to be updated because also they can have known vulnerabilities and you should have a mechanism in place that keeps these images up to date and automatically rebuilds your products once you have a, a known vulnerability found. Bringing us to the next point. The container image hardening mostly applies to what we call base images. So for something from where you want to inherit from and where you want to package your products inside. During your, your image build process for your actual products, you can add arbitrary content to your images. This can be your application, but for example, it can also be someone in your company that uh, <laughs> wants to add uh, a virus or whatever inside your, um, inside your Docker image. For this one, you should put a vulnerability scanning process in place. So there are tools on the market, like for example, CoreOS Claire or Clam AV um, that you can use. Even more sophisticated is now um, in, uh, in the open source world, the Project Harbor, which is a fully fledged Docker registry that is containing the um, uh, vulnerability scanning, as, which is also clear behind the scenes. But uh, So there are tools that, that you can use for that. Or for example, when you're hosting your Docker images on, on GCR, so on the uh, Google Container Registry, there is vulnerability scanning already available. And also, there are commercial products, again, Nexus IQ and Black Duck Hub, that can also do that scanning for you. And yeah, keep in mind, vulnerabilities do not arrive on day one when you're building your application. Vulnerabilities arrive on day 10, 100, or 1,000. So you need to have a process in place that is scanning everything that you are uh, building on a daily or weekly basis. So you need to be as fast as possible aware that there is a vulnerability inside one of your products. Mm. And when we have that done, we can be more sure about the technology stack inside the container. But until now, we haven't deployed that container or that application once yet. And now we want to look what we can do at the end, how in the shipping process of our images and in the, in the environment where we want to deploy it in. So, meaning we will talk about the delivery integrity and environment security. Delivery integrity is maybe something that I would like to explain. So if you remember the, the CI CD pipeline in the beginning of the presentation, we were arriving at the end with our deliverable and our so-called delivery registry. And we want to bring that image now into the, the three different environments, meaning in your customer's premise, in your data center, or in the public cloud. So meaning that you want to be sure that the image that you actually produced is the same image that you are deploying in production. Because what could happen? An attacker could gain access to any of these registries and replace them with an image that he produced. So either he can do that transparently, 
with maybe the same kind of functionality, but that is exporting credit card data of your customers to his own account. I don't know. So he can, you can imagine several things. He can also just replace that image with something that is not working, and at the end, he will break down your application and destroy your reputation. So this is something that you would want to avoid. And there are several, let's say, low-hanging fruits that you can already do without much effort. The first thing, you should apply role-based access control on registries. So make sure that only a user that is actually allowed to, to push and to update images inside your registries is, um, yeah, is allowed to do so. so um, for example, what, what uh, we are doing is we have, dedicated, we have a dedicated account for our CI system, and only the CI system is allowed to push these images uh, into, uh, into our registry. So no um, yeah, person from outside or even from inside can, can modify these images. Every image has to go through a unified process so that we have this traceability. Traceability is the next point. So what is also important is that you somehow keep track between which image you produced from which revision of your software. What you can do here easily is you can uh, create a hash of, uh, of your image, for example, and you can tag your source code revision accordingly. Like this, at least you have a visual uh, represent or a visual comparison between what you are deploying in, um, in, in production and what was actually built at some point mm -hmm. earlier. And there are more and more projects popping up that help you automating that. Like there's, for example, Docker Notary, or also known as Docker Content Trust, mm -hmm. that, uh, do, that does the automatic sim image signing and verification for you. Or there are projects mm -hmm. like Graphias uh, that is uh, even more, a bit more sophisticated, that can uh, store metadata uh, regarding your build process for a given image, and you can have even more traceability about uh, what, you, uh, what actually happened to that image until it arrived in production. And, and you're using Kubernetes, there are dynamic admission controllers that allow you, at the time you launch an image, to verify its authenticity. So these are things that you can put in place, and they help you <laughs> like um, verifying the authenticity of your images. In the next point, um, we will talk about a bit, a bit about Kubernetes hardening. This is not uh, a talk of, of a very um, advanced way of Kubernetes hardening. These are low-hanging fruits that you should apply no matter what. Okay? So unfortunately, there are still a lot of unsecured Kubernetes dashboards out there. The Tesla hack that you saw in the beginning of the presentation was actually due to an exposed dashboard without authentication on the internet. And then the attacker could just happily mine his bitcoins on Tesla's infrastructure. So either shut down your, uh, your dashboard if you do not necessarily need it, this is by the way Google's recommendation, or uh, at least put an authentication mechanism in front. So we in Gemalto, we are using um, a reverse proxy in front that is authenticating users towards um, our Active Directory. And like this, we can ensure the identity of the person that is actually doing operations on that, um, uh, on that Kubernetes dashboard. Um, bringing us to the next point, Airbug. So also apply role-based access control on your Kubernetes cluster. This is now enabled by default. Um, for sure, it's, uh, Kubernetes did a huge job on improving their own security. It's just that there are also a lot of, let's say, unpatched and older Kubernetes versions out there where Airbug is not activated, which can be an actual threat. Because if a user gains access to your application and he is able to launch remote code in there, so the attack that we saw in the beginning for the application security, then he would be able to perform any kind of operations against the, the Kubernetes API server, meaning that he can launch arbitrary images inside your Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. And he can also gain any kind of information about your environment, for example, uh, by using the, um, the kubelet read-only port. So secure, enable airbag, disable uh, anonymous read access, which is still available on the kubelet. And then you have like um, a more secure Kubernetes cluster. What you should also do is think about network security. So 
your pot to cut your pot to pot communication is normally uh, open bar like you say in France so uh, um, every container can talk to each other you should limit that you should only allow the communication between uh, between services that are actually allowed to talk between each other you can do that either with kubernetes network policies or you should really look into uh, the project Istio, which is like popping up a lot. Google will, co will support it on a commercial basis. So um, you should use, um, you should uh, really look into Istio because it can uh, perform, it can yeah, do, your, do your network security, but it can do much more than that. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, tool. Bringing us to the last point. So Kubernetes is hardened now we still have our operating system and our infrastructure. What we would do here for your operating system, uh, what we would recommend you is perform the same principles as for the container hardening, meaning put only content that is actually needed to run uh, well, your application or in this kind, uh, your, your Kubernetes, and also do it in a repeatable manner. So, for example, there's a tool out there um, Everything that's here is, is open source, uh, freely available. So there's a tool out there called, actually called Packer that allows you to do repeatable builds for your VM images. Okay, like this, you can build your Kubernetes cluster in a, in a repeatable, immutable manner, and um, yeah, you have at least traceability how your uh, VM was, was created. Also, what you should do is you should apply uh, tools like GOS and Linux on, in your OS. So GOS is to ensure that there are certain tools and services available in all of your images. And Linux helps you to um, perform a, um, a compliance scan. Like, for example, if you need to comply to PCI DSS or CIS benchmarks, this Linux will, will do that automatically for you. So. Yeah, now you have your OS secured, and the last part is infrastructure as code. So, um, when you're on the public cloud, it's very easy. They, it's, they invite you to, to, use, uh, to use CloudFormation, for example, or Google Deployment Manager, and there are tools out there, like, for example, in the AWS case, CFN NAC, that helps you to avoid common obstacles um, inside your, your infrastructure, like, for example, exposed SSH ports, uh, the publicly accessible on the internet, uh, public S3 buckets, all of, the, or, yeah, you can define also your own rules in, in, in this, in CFN NAC. So, you should apply that, because like this, you, you avoid common obstacles and you have a, a very good compliance report uh, over your infrastructure. So, and when we have that done, we can make an arrow at all of our layers. <laughs> I don't want to say that we are entirely secure, but at least we know now what and where we are deploying, and we have control over our environment, and this is actually important. So, for sure, you have some, some more jobs to do uh, for, for your security afterwards, but at least you have more confidence. Bringing us to our takeaway. So, what do I want you to, to take away when you go out of this room today? Four things. The first is security is not a one-time job. So make sure that you have a process in place uh, that is uh, automated, repeatable, to detect uh, vulnerabilities inside your, your applications on day one, on day 10, and on day 1,000. Second part, I hope that you saw that integrating these tools is not a very difficult task. Honestly, you can retrieve the binary of, of uh, OWASP dependency scan, uh, dependency mm -hmm. check. And in five minutes, you have this integrated in your pipeline. It's trivial, and it gives you a very nice insight about the security status of your applications. Same for Claire, uh, same for, uh, for Linus. It's, it's easy. Keep your Docker images small and your application dependencies up to date. So start with Alpine, and then reduce everything that you do not really need inside your images. Okay? And as a last part, we were talking about three basic security principles here today, which mm. is uh, defense in depth, least privilege, and attack surface limiting. And these three principles, you can apply them everywhere, okay? Keep that in mind with everything that you are doing, and you will be more secure inside for your applications. So with that, I would like to conclude my talk, say thanks for listening, and uh, I would like to ask if you have any further questions. No. 
Oh. Yes. Would you recommend a particular tool for uh, uh, continuous delivery, or uh, does this apply to any tool existing? So just to give you some insights for our pers our own personal our Gemalto continuous delivery tool is, uh, is Jenkins. So uh, we are using here the uh, let's Jenkins pipelines are standard in 2018. So uh, inside Gemalto, what is uh, what is interesting to know is that we are putting in place. Um, Oh, we put in place uh, an inner source uh, process for we, sh we share our common pipeline library, so where we all of these steps that you saw in the in the slide about uh, the CI/CD process, all of these are let's say pluggable steps uh, inside your your pipeline, and um, we made very good experience with that. So all the applications that we were referencing here, we dockerized them, and at the end you can. Uh, Every team can retrieve a standard pipeline, modify them to their own needs, but at the end we have a common baseline uh, for all of our, um, our CI-CD pipelines. Scans of the images are raising thousands of alerts, so how, can, how do you manage well, this? Uh, <laughs> This depends on the image that you are scanning. I can tell you that uh, the images that we are putting in production have zero alerts. Zero critical alerts? Yeah. So yeah, for sure you then should put some some rules. You should, you know, having these reports um, doesn't necessarily mean that you will be free from security. For sure, then you have uh, something to act on. So you should replace critical and and major alerts. Then you should also see what is the impact of the vulnerability that you found. So. Um, is this really concerning you or not? But um, at the end, I think our vulnerability scans are never critical, never major, and in very few cases, even minor. Okay. Did you implicate your SOC, the Security Operating Center, in the, in the process of uh, verification and alerting? Uh, <laughs> this is something that we're having uh, in the pipeline for 2019, actually. Bon. Bon, merci beaucoup. <rires>